Well, with stroke, we needed something that could combine really very different deficits. Understanding what you're saying, understanding your speech, movement of your leg, ability to see off to one side. These types of deficits are very different, and the scale allowed them to be summed in a number. The NIH stroke scale has proven to be a very important prognostic tool. We use it not only in clinical research, but we use it when we talk to patients and families. Because we know that among patients who have a low score, four or five, for example, their chances of having a fairly good outcome, surviving the illness, and maybe not even having much uh, impairment afterwards or much disability is very, very high. We can explain that to families and they understand that. The real benefit in the stroke scale is that it provides you a common language to talk about the severity of the patient's deficit so that when your colleagues take over the care of the patient on the neurology service or the internal medicine service, they can understand the, the nature of the stroke and the severity of it when the patient presented, and they can also get an assessment if the patient's getting better or worse by repeating the stroke scale at a later time. The NIH stroke scale is a measurement of impairments, that is, what a physician finds on exam. It's not a measure of disability. We do have different scales that measure disability, and I've pointed out to physicians and colleagues that what is an impairment is an entirely different thing than a disability, and I give the example of two guys going out to cut wood. One is the pianist and the other is the vocalist. In a misadventure, they both cut off the right hand. They both have the same impairment. The vocalist is not disabled, but the pianist is. My hope is that every medical student who goes into a medical school knows what the NIH stroke scale and has actually been trained and been certified in that scale. What we're trying to do is make this part of the common currency uh, so, that, um, so that everybody understands what the patient's level of deficit is as they're explaining it to other, other care providers. Well, another very important um, reason why the NIH stroke scale score should be carried out in everybody is that it ensures that the patient is going to be thoroughly examined and uh, you won't go by a first uh, impression that this patient, for instance, doesn't have a severe stroke. It gives you a number that's very easily communicable to other physicians or nurses about how sick the patient is, sort of like a thermometer reading when you have with a fever. And I think that's, that's something that's it's, it was missing before we had scales like the United Stroke Scale score to use. There aren't always specified stroke units. What we needed was a standardized way to examine our patients. And if we have this tool, we can make better judgments about is this patient better or worse. This scale brought the neurological examination of a stroke patient, which is so variable, down to a basic level in which one could actually uh, attribute a score to it. Also, it's a very good scale that it correlates very well with how the patient's going to do long term. The more consistent the communication, the more and better, I think, the care of the patient's going to be. So I, I think that that's the greatest benefit.